Hi guys and thank you so much for joining me. If you are new here, I'm Kat and I like to talk about true crime, conspiracies and all sorts of related things. Okay, so today let's talk about Jack the Stripper and Hammersmith nude murders. But before we get started, just a quick disclaimer, all the information that I'm giving you in today's video is already found in the public domain. I also don't mean any disrespect to anyone I talk about in the video. This is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Thank you so much. So let's get into it. I probably you've never heard of Jack the Stripper. So today is the day to find out. A small area of London lived in fear that he would kill again. Women lived in fear of becoming this monster's next victim. Several prostitutes were killed in secret and left on display in gruesome displays of power and control. This is the story of the most notorious unknown serial killer that you've probably never even heard of. Jack the Stripper. Like his more infamous namesake, this Jack struck at least six times in total. Some believe he killed up to eight women. Jack the Stripper's death toll is quite an ambiguous one, as two of his supposed victims don't quite match the modus operandi of the other six. All victims were discovered in the Hammersmith district of London in or around the River Thames over the course of a 12-month period from 1964 to 1965. Each body was discovered unclothed. Hannah Telford was born into a Lancashire mining family. She was found close to the Hammersmith Bridge on 2nd of February 1964. Several teeth were missing and her underwear had been forced down her throat. She was also strangled. Irene Lockwood was discovered just over two months later on 8th of April. She was found not too far from the spot Hannah was found. Police established that both deaths were linked, along with a third, Elizabeth Fig. A local caretaker, Kenneth Archibald, confessed to Irene's murder at the end of April, but owing to inconsistencies in his account, he was dismissed as credible. Helen Bartholomew was only 22 years old when she was found on 24th of April. This time, though, her body was discovered in an alleyway in Brentford. It was this crime scene that gave detectives their first ever real clue. Specks of paint were discovered close to the body which investigators attrib attributed to the production of motor vehicles. Detectives believed their suspect was a paint sprayer. Mary Fleming. When Mary Fleming was discovered on 14th of July in an open street in Chiswick, many locals reported hearing a vehicle, probably a car, reversing down the street shortly before the discovery of her body. More specks of paint were discovered at the scene. Frances Brown was last seen alive by her friend Kim Taylor on 23rd of October. Just over a month later, on 25th of November, she was discovered in an alleyway in Kensington. Taylor was able to provide a composite of the man that picked her up as well as a description of the car he was driving. Kim thought it was either a Ford Zephyr or a Zodiac. Jack's last known victim was Bridget O'Hara. Known as Bridie, she was found behind the Huron trading estate inside the shed. More paint traces were found at the scene. There were signs that she had been stored in a warm environment, perhaps as a result of the Transformers' presence. Elizabeth Figg's murder predated the stripper's official victims by five years, being discovered on 17th of June 1959. Her murder is linked to the others as she was found near the River Thames in Chiswick. She was strangled. Another possible victim is Gwyneth Rees. She, she also had several teeth missing and was strangled with a ligature. Her body was found on a rubbish tip 
not far from the Thames in 1963. The police never actually officially solved the Hammersmith nude murders as they came to be known, but some interesting leads developed. Hannah Telford and Francis Brown were said to be peripherally involved in the Profumo affair of 1963. This scandal involved a sexual relationship between John Profumo, UK, UK Secretary of State of War, and Christine Keeler, a 19-year-old aspiring model. Other Hammersmith nude murder victims allegedly had some involvement with a pornographic movie scene and were known to one another, perhaps their killer as well. Chief Superintendent John DeRose led the investigation into the deaths. It was said that during his investigation, 7,000 suspects were brought in for questioning. At a series of news conferences, he stated that the suspects had been narrowed down to just 20, then halved, and finally, just a trio of suspects remained. After the initial conference, Jack the Stripper's reign of terror was over. He didn't kill again. The paint specks found on four of the victims ultimately led to an abandoned factory on Heron Trading Estate. O'Hara's body was discovered not far from this location. Duros favored one suspect over all others though. During a BBC interview in 1970s, Duros formally identified Scottish security guard Mungo Ireland as the man he believed to be Jack the Stripper. He never identified Ireland by name, instead referring to him as Big John. Duros stated Ireland became a suspect after the murder of Bridget O'Hara. Like the specks of paint, Ireland was linked to the Heron trading estate. Ireland took his own life not long afterward. He left a note stating, I cannot stick it any longer. To save you and the police looking for me, I'll be in the garage. Duros perhaps influenced keen amateur detectives and the public alike with his honest opinions. But more recent evidence does suggest Ireland was in Scotland at the time of Bridges' death. More recent suspects also have come to light. One of the more interesting of these is British light heavyweight boxing champion Freddie Mills. Ex-gangster Jimmy Tippett Jr. suggested Freddie committed the murders while conducting research on gang activity in London. Tippett stated, I have spoken to famous figures in the underworld and senior police officers in Scotland Yard and I am convinced Freddie Mills was the killer. Contrary to his public image, Mills was a sexually warped sadist who enjoyed inflicting pain. His suicide in 1965 did coincide with the end of the Hammersmith nude murders. However, law enforcement never substantiated this claim. The crime and investigation channel show Fred the Dynage Murder Casebook proposed a more interesting hypothesis. The show devoted an episode to Harold Jones, a Welsh teenager convicted of the double murder of two young girls in 1921. As a juvenile, he escaped the death penalty due to his age. Twenty years into his life sentence, he was released on good behaviour. John subsequently surfaced in Fulham, South West London in 1947. There were similarities between the 1921 double murders and the Jack the Stripper murders. No sign of sexual assault took place, but all victims suffered terrible violence. Who was Jack the Stripper? A security guard? A former boxing champion? A Welsh child killer? An obsessed Jack the Ripper fanatic? Chances are his identity will never be known. So, who do you guys think was Jack the Stripper? Who do you think he was? Was he the boxer? Was he the guy, uh, the boy who killed the, the girls and then came out on good behavior? Who was he? Honestly, I have no idea. I have... All I can say is that he must have probably had some kind of uh, childhood mental issues. Maybe he was abused as, as a child, maybe his maternal figure abused him when he was a boy and he grew up hating women and that's why he started attacking women. I have no idea, but honestly we are still no close to finding out who he really was. We have a couple of suspects who look like they could have been, 
but no one can say with certainty that yes, one of those was the Jack the Stripper serial killer. Anyway, guys, please let me know what you think in the comments below. In the comments below. For now, thank you so much for watching. Please stay safe and take care. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!